Hello, everybody, and welcome to Profiling Evil Reacts. On September 27th of 2019, William Brian McKenzie left work to hang out with some associates in Jackson, Tennessee. His mother would report him missing a little bit later, and that would launch a 702-day search by her before his vehicle, and we're presuming his body, would be located in a small fishing pond just 2.25 miles east of his home. <laughs> That's right, less than six minutes away. Was this murder or a tragic accident? Jackson, Tennessee police are confirming the discovery and the recovery of a vehicle that belongs to William Brian McKenzie. I've seen the plate. I saw the pictures as it was coming out of the water. It's the same plate that was reported earlier. He's been missing for nearly two years. The vehicle has human remains inside, and they've been turned over to a Tennessee medical examiner for an autopsy and identification. Hey, would you please take a moment, hit the like and the subscribe button, and ring the bell if you'd like to receive notifications like videos like this one. And thanks for supporting us at Profiling Evil. Hey, and by the way, have you considered our channel memberships? You can get a little more insight and a monthly opportunity to chat privately with the entire Profiling Evil team. Check out our options and thanks again. Well, let's get back to this. On Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, August 29th, a fisherman called police dispatchers and reported a submerged vehicle in a pond inside of a private homeowners association. The vehicle was about four feet below the water surface. Jackson police dispatched the West Tennessee Dive and Recovery Team who located the vehicle and pulled it out of the water. Now, you might remember them. They worked with Adventures with Purpose, and the Adventures with Purpose team invited us, Profiling Evil, to join in on the case and examine it from a criminal perspective. We held a number of discussions with Mackenzie's mother, Frances Gaines. It, those of you who saw her were, were emotionally attached to her. What an amazing woman. Francis continued to search for her son nearly every weekend from the time he disappeared until now. I mean, this picture of her really says it all, where she would take magnets to bodies of water looking for the vehicle. Well, listen as she describes her son, Brian. His, um, I have to say first, his ethics very strong. He's all about working. Um, the moment he learned the value of a dollar at 16 years old, got his first job, it was like, straight shot from there. Um, hard worker, uh, he's very loving, emotional, um, giving, trusting. And I'm not just saying that because this is my son. If you've asked, if you could ask anyone that knew him, they that knows him, that they would say the same. Uh, he would take his shirt off his back for you if you were, if you needed it. Uh, he was very open-minded. Um, he loved to share his thoughts and he liked to read the Bible a lot uh, and send me verses of it to my phone sometimes. And um, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't go to church. I feel that God can hear me anywhere that I, I talk. And that's where, what I would always tell him. Brian, it doesn't matter where you're at. You know, you can pray in the, in the privacy of your own home. He'll hear you. He's like, yes, I know, Mom, but I don't see you opening up that book. And, <laughs> you know, he just, he, big brother, loves his sisters and, um, and his little brothers. And just, he always would be the one to encourage. And if he knew you are feeling down, he wanted to bring your spirit up. He'd act kind of goofy you know, and do some kind of silly dance. And when I, when I fell down, he's like, you want a cookie meal, mom? And he knew cooking, I just, I love to cook. So when he smelled food, he'd go over there and be like, what are you cooking? And um, just, he's my prince, he's my rock. 
Well, let's take a moment and recap what we uncovered as we investigated this case. We were doing our part above the surface while our friends Jared and Sam of Adventures with Purpose and Sam Sam the Adventure Man worked below the water. They were joined by Mike at Muddy Bottom Adventures. It was really a privilege to work with that team. Well, let's zoom in on the map and into Jackson, Tennessee, and look at the overall theater that we're going to be talking about. Uh, on the left, we can see uh, the home where Brian lived. And over on the right, we can see some associates residents, and these become pretty important in this thing. This little point up at the top really didn't matter. We thought it did at first, but we excluded it as a possible search location. So what we know is that Brian left his home at around 745 in the morning on the 27th to go to work at Denny's. He worked there until about 3.30 in the afternoon. And after leaving work, he grabbed some fuel texted a few people and headed north to his friend's house. It was actually his grandmother's house. Nearby was another associate that played prominently into this story overall. And so it's important to just kind of see the area where the two uh, fellows that he hung out with lived. Now, from there, we know that Brian made a phone call out on the roadway just outside of a place called Dollar Tree, a little a little uh, business and uh, then things got a little funny. They went inside the business for a while. But from there, we know that they ended up at the Scottish Inns. Now, we don't know why it was such a short time, but they uh, quickly traveled from the Scottish Inns north to a place called Knight's Inn. Now, what happens next is a mystery. Somehow, either directly from Knight's Inn or via another location, Brian's vehicle ends up in a small pond north of the Knight's Inn. It's in a small uh, residential housing development area, private HOA. And there, his vehicle is now discovered nearly two years later underwater. As we zoom in on this, we're going to see uh, kind of what the area was like. And again, imagine that this probably was in the early morning hours when the vehicle was driven into this pond. It's important to recognize that uh, there may be other routes that could have been taken in order to end up in that pond. It could have been the, a route from the associates if they made it back to the associates' home. And if Brian, for instance, was under the influence of a drug or alcohol, he may have wanted to avoid the major roads and taken some back roads toward his house. We can see that it clearly would take him right past where this pond is located. Uh, we can see if you continue on just a little further where his home is. And so it makes me question whether there's a possibility this could be an accident. We, we just don't know. But while Jackson police continue their investigation, I think that we and, of course, Francis can find some solace in knowing that William Brian McKenzie is no longer listed as a missing person. He's most likely been recovered and his mom and his family are going to have to go through that painful waiting and wondering period to confirm that if that it's really his body inside the vehicle. Now, while she waits and wonders, law enforcement's going to be combing through the evidence they now have. Uh, I mean, really, there is so much that they can learn from the vehicle and the location uh, where things happened, the condition of the body, uh, where the body is in the vehicle, uh, all kinds of things. Now, the photographs we received from those uh, people who were retrieving the vehicle from the pond show that the vehicle was in remarkably good condition. Police are going to have to also impatiently wait for the results from the medical examiner. Undoubtedly, one of their detectives is observing the autopsy, probably while we speak, and he's looking for signs of trauma to the body. And even though the body is decomposed, there will be identifying components. They're going to be looking for signs of injury that point to death by an accident or drowning or homicide. As the police department uh, remains quiet, which they will, they're going to continue to investigate, but we can rest assured that they are going to be doggedly following every new lead that they have. If you want to know more about this case, go back and listen to our earlier interviews with Francis and the Adventures with Purpose team, where we 
delve more deeply into the theories around Brian's disappearance. We, we also do some, some interesting things like look at his phone records and chart those out and create link analysis. So here's my question for you. If this is Brian McKenzie, what do you think happened to him? And, and if it isn't Brian McKenzie, where is he? I'm going to be watching for your comments below. Thanks for weighing in on this topic. If the body in the vehicle turns out to be Brian, it is surely sad news for Frances. On the other hand, she will be given a gift that many grieving families never get, the gift of burying their loved one and having at least some sense of closure. Well, thanks for supporting us at Profiling Evil. And again, hit the like and subscribe button and ring that bell. Now, we'll see you soon at the next crime scene. Thank you.